Hello, sport fans. This is Bill Riley, your state tournament public address announcer for the past three years. It is my pleasure on behalf of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union to bring you the official motion pictures of another Girls State Basketball Championship. As was the story in previous tournaments, thousands of spectators jammed the Drake Fieldhouse in Des Moines to witness the thrilling contest between Slater and Camrar for the 1950 championship. There was not one available seat left as over 6,500 sport-loving fans filled the Fieldhouse beyond capacity. The total attendance for the entire tournament, over 40,000 people. On hand to bring a play-by-play -play account of this all-important game were many of Iowa's leading radio stations. To the many thousands of girls basketball fans in Iowa who could not see the classic, listening to it over the radio was second best to being there. Tension was at its peak. As each team took its place on the floor for the final warm-ups, loyal supporters literally shook the field house with the stage was set for revenge. Could Slater wipe out the 56 to 51 by Camrar earlier in the season? Or would Camrar with a fighting and determined ball club repeat its 1948 performance and capture the crown? Time would soon tell, and we're ready to go with the first quarter of action. Starting the championship game for Camrar, at forwards, Dorothy Welp, number 12. First team All-State, All-State Garden 48 when Camrar won the championship. Arliss Havingaw, number six. And Barbara Hudson, number 13, the forwards for Camrar. Guards for Camrar, Aletha Van Langen, number 10. And those are the Camrar guards in action now. Faye Kennedy, number three. Marilyn Gerber, number four. Linda Fonken, number seven, substitute guard. Starting the game for Slater, at forward, and there are the forwards working now. Margaret Middens shooting, number 22. Martell Ursland, number 25, second team All-State. And starting forward for Slater, Nettie Hammond, number 15. Guards for Slater, Marjorie Akala, number 14. First team All-State. And the Slater guards in action now. Darlene Clonglin, number 12. Catherine Twitt, number 23, and Elaine Twitt, number 32, substitute guard. As the first quarter moves along, the teams begin to lose the first nervousness of the big game, begin to play basketball. Championship basketball, precision basketball. Slater, coached by Andy Butt, veteran coach educator. Andy brought the Slater girls to the tournament for the past three years, and they were the third place team in 1948. Camrar, coached by Dick Brower, the young coach who brought his team to the state finals in his very first year of coaching. However, Camrar is no newcomer to tournament competition. Camrar teams have been in state tournament five different times, and of course, they were the champs in 48. Now, to note the action in the final seconds of the first quarter. Slater used Margaret Middens at the pivot, with Martell Ursland and Nettie Hammond out. In the first quarter score, Camrar 21, Slater 14. Well, it's the start of the second quarter now. Slater, trailing by seven points, puts on the pressure in this second period to even matters in the big scoreboard. And there's Slater with a basket by Ursland. Camrar now with the ball. There's a hook shot by Havingaw. Missed. Officiating the very finest in history. There's Mel Walker of Atumma watching the play with an expert's eye for perfection. The Slater guards had a lot of fight and fire. Watch Akala, Clonglin, and Twit go for the ball there. The camera guards, crowd favorites for their spirit and sportsmanship, scrapped and scrapped throughout the tournament, fought hard. There are the camera girls in action. There's the great pivot, Dorothy Welp, the camera pivot, fighting for position, a shot missed. The camera offense moved a bit faster than Slater. Hodson playing out, having God driving down the right side for that sensational right hand hook shot, and Welp at pivot. There's a bucket by Well. The Slater offense was deliberate, calm, precise. These two well-coached teams represent a field of nearly 700 girls' teams, teams that began competition for this championship game way back in sectional play. Camera with the ball. Slater guards, making it tough. Hudson. 
Now Slater controlling the ball. And as the second quarter draws to a close, here's the deliberate play of the Slater forwards working relentlessly towards victory. Watch Nettie Hammond set, shoot, kick. There it is, good. The officials, Mel Walker and Benny Beckerman of Des Moines, watch the Slater girls as the seconds tick away. It's almost halftime. Watch Nettie Hammond set, kick, good. And at the halftime, Slater 31, Tamrar 28. It's the second half now of this championship game, which saw the lead change hands 27 times. And at the start of the second half, Slater holding that narrow three-point lead. But not for long. Well, pivots, shoots, and scores. Now close-up action. Hudson with a long one. Scores. Watch Dorothy Welp work under the basket, fighting for control. All-state performer, a bucket. For Slater, Ursuline, the playmaker shoots and scores. Hammer guards bringing the ball out. Referee Walker spotted one and called it there. Did you see that? Coupled with Benny Beckerman, the officiating was at its best. Now, watch the much publicized, delicate touch of Margaret Middens. The pass, the flip, the bucket. As the play in the third quarter of the championship game continues, another champion watches from the sidelines. She is Mary Armstrong, representing the great basketball family from Wyota. The 1950 state free throw champion, Mary Armstrong. Back the action, Midden splips, missed that one. Jump ball in the Slater territory, control ball. Slater always working into the pivot. There's the pass in for Middens. Watch the flip, a bucket. Camera with the ball now, a shot. Foul called, Dorothy Welp shoots two. There's a scramble under the basket and tension is mounting. A shot by Slater, watch a nifty retrieve there by scrappy camera guard Faye Kennedy. Now close up action again, Hodson. As the third quarter ends, Andy Butt and the Slater girls will begin plotting strategy for the final period. Final seconds ticking away in the third quarter. Camera fighting for the basket. And at the end of the third period, Camera by 1.46 to 45. Andy Butt and the Slater girls, they're near at hand. Dick Brower reminds the Camera girls of that trip to Texas. Pressure is on, years of practice, hours of concentration, boundless hopes. This is the fourth quarter, eight minutes away from the championship. Reflecting the coaching of Andy Butt, the Slater girls play the same deliberate, calculated brand ball, always stalling, taking it easy. In slow motion now, stalling, waiting for an opening. There's the opening, the pass into middens. She sets, shoots, the flip. A bucket. Camera with the ball. Now watch two All-Staters, Dorothy Welp, with the ball, Marjorie Akala Gardiger, championship form, a basket. A free throw by Ursland for Slater. Oh, working the ball in there, forward court. Trying to work it in, always. Fighting for control of the ball. Slater guards, excellent. Hodson with the ball out. The having gone. Well, can't get it away. Hodson tries a long one. Hits for a basket. Camera again, always trying to work it in. The Slater guards making it so tough. Well, can't get the shot away. Hodson tries another long one. That one missed. In slow motion again, note the deliberate play of the Slater girls reflecting past tournament experience. The stall is on. Stall, stall, hold the ball, watch for an opening. The pass into middens, back out again. Always feeding into middens at the pivot. But the stall is on now by the Slater girls.
burning up the time, the valuable seconds. Middens coming out from the pivot, confusing the camera girls. Now she's back in the pivot there, watching for the opening. There's the pass, the flip, a basket. Now as the minutes tick away in the final quarter, camera are closely guarded by the Slater girls. That's Klonglin, number 12 there. Always fighting for the ball. The Slater girls, tremendous defense. Havengaw shoots one, misses. And now in close-up action, presenting the Slater stall once again, in full swing, burning those valuable seconds away, burning those minutes away. Always closer to victory. Always nearer to the state championship. The Slater stall. It's the automatic timeout. Only three minutes remain, and the 1950 Iowa girls basketball champions will be crowned. teams were really up for this championship game. They matched shot for shot and never was there a decisive lead by either team. It was a blistering struggle up until the last four minutes. It was at this point that Slater started to pull away with Margaret Middens deciding the issue with her spectacular fadeaway hook shot. Both coaches, Andy Butt of Slater and Dick Brower of Camrar, did splendid jobs in bringing their respective teams to the finals. Middens led the scoring with 32 points, while her teammates Martell Ursland had 19 and Nettie Hammond 14. Dorothy Welp led Camrar's offense with 21 points. Barbara Hodson scored 19 and Arliss Havingaw 12. Not enough can be said for the fine defensive play of both teams. The backcourt performers played alert ball, forcing the opposition to shoot from far out on many attempts. Forming Slater's defense was Marjorie Ackala, Darlene Klonglin, and Catherine Twitt. The bulwark of Camrar's defense, Aletha Van Langen, Faye Kennedy, and Marilyn Gerber. Yes, it was great basketball. Iowa State Tournament basketball. And here it is, the end of the ball game with Slater, the new girls' state champions for 1950. That's it. There they are, the new champions. The final score, Slater 65, Camrar 52 displaying the fine sportsmanship that is predominant in Iowa girls basketball. Both teams get together for backslapping, handshakes, and heartiest congratulations. There they are, the Slater girls, the queens of the 1950 tournament, and, appropriately, a great basket of roses for the queens. Here is Rod Chisholm, executive secretary of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union, and Mr. O.H. Rutenbeck of Avoca. Mr. Rutenbeck, president of the girls' union, makes the trophy awards. Consolation awards go to Winterset and Mallard. Winterset defeated Mallard in the consolation 50 to 44. Two great teams, Winterset and Mallard. And now Camrar, yes, folks back home in Camrar can be mighty proud of their team. A fighting team, truly fine sports. And to the winners, the championship trophy. With the championship, the honor of representing Iowa in the interstate game with Dimmitt at Waco, Texas. Slater is the first girls basketball team from Iowa to play another state champion outside the borders of the Hawkeye State. Well, sport fans, this winds up another state championship tournament. And with it all the thrills and color and sportsmanship that make the Iowa girls basketball tournament one of Iowa's leading sport classics.